How to Steal a Dog by Barbara O'Connor, Chapter 3. Okay, I said to Toby. You go that way, I'll go this way. He squinted in the direction I had pointed. I don't see no dogs down there, he said. I sighed. Maybe I should have asked Luanne to help me. I wanted to, but I just had this feeling she would mess things up worse than Toby was liable to. Not on purpose, but she just would. Mainly because of her mama, who finds out everything we do, even if Luanne doesn't tell. And Mrs. Godfrey doesn't like me the one, the little, one little bit. She pinches her face up real hateful, like when I go over there. One time I saw her wiping off Luanne's bedroom door with a sponge right where I had touched it, like I had left my cooties in there and infect our family. And when I used to invite Luanne over to my apartment, her mom Mama would always find a reason to say no. She could pluck a reason out of air like a magician plucks a rabbit out of his hat. A dentist appointment. A, a visiting a relative. A sudden need to shop for new shoes. So I knew asking Luann to help me steal a dog would probably be a bad idea. But Toby, I could see he was going to be more trouble than help. But what choice did I have? Listen, Toby, I said real slow and calm. You gotta walk down there and look. Look in yards. Look on the porches. Look in the backyards, Eva. Just look, okay? He nodded. Okay. I stared off down the street and stopped. What do I do if I see one? Come get me. Okay. And remember the rules for the dogs, I said. You know, about not barking and all that? Okay. Okay. We went in opposite directions. The first dog I saw came trotting right up the, the street toward me. He was brown with tufts of fur that stuck together in clumps. Every few feet, he stopped to sniff the ground. Hey, boy, I called to him. He looked up, waggled in scrawny tail. His face had bald spots on it. One eye was closed up into a slit with knots, gnats swarming all around him. Nope, that dog wouldn't do. Nobody cared about him, that was for sure. I gave him a little pat on the head because I felt sorry for him and then continued down the street. When I came to a house with a tra trailer beside it, a dog started, started barking. A shrill, yapping bark. When I got closer, I saw a dog tied to a clothesline on the side of the house. A short-legged dog with a sm smushed-in nose and a curcular cur tail. When he saw me, he raced back and forth along the clothesline, his yippy bark getting shriller and shriller. From inside the trailer, a man's voice hollered, Shut up, Sparky! Nope, that dog would not do either. Too noisy. A few houses further on, a great big dog with a bushy black fur sat by the side of the road watching me. When I tried to pet him, he slinked away with his tail between his legs. Then some woman came out with a rolled-up newspaper. She smacked him on the rear and hauled him off the collar and pushed him up under the porch. Get under there like I told you, she said. Then she stomped back up the steps and went inside. It didn't seem like someone who would pay money for a dog. Finally, at the end of the street, I saw a dog who had steal me written all, all over him. He was clean and fluffy, with red bandana tied around his neck. He didn't bark when I got closer. He even let me pet him, wagging his tail like he was the happiest dog on earth. I was about to think I'd found the perfect dog to steal, but then I took one look at his house and changed my mind. The front steps were rotted right up the porch, lying in... A heap of lumber in the red dirt yard. Bricks and boards were stacked to make steps in the tiny house with its peeling paint and torn screens. A plastic window box had come loose on one side, spilling dirt and dried up brown flowers in the bushes. A rusty old car sat on cinder blocks in the gravel driveway. Nope, that dog wouldn't do either. The people in that house weren't rich. I bet they'd never pay $500 for their dog, no matter how much they loved it. It looked like it was going to be harder than I thought to find a dog that fit all the rules in my notebook. I crossed over to the corner and waited for Toby. When I saw him skipping up the road toward me, I called out, Any luck? I saw one, and he growled at me. Only one, are you sure? I saw some cats. No, cats won't do. How come? They just won't, I said. Let's try one more street. Then we gotta get back to the car before Mama gets off work. I hurried over to the next block. Toby kept stopping to pick up stuff along the side of the road. Rocks and acorns and wrappers and things. I had to go back and yank him a couple times. When we got to the corner, I looked at the street again. Whitmore Road. This one looks good, I said. Let's go up one side and down the other. You stay with me. We walked along the street, peering over fences, sneaking into backyards. No luck. Suddenly, Toby pointed. Look at that house, he said. Just ahead of us was a huge brick house set back off the street a ways. All the other houses on that street were small, one-story wooden houses with tiny yards and no porches. But that brick house was two stories high. I bet it had a whole bunch of rooms inside. Come on, I said to Toby. Let's go check it out. We ran to the house. It towered over like the little houses next to it. The front yard was the biggest one in the whole street with a chain-link fence all the way around it. Along the fence was a thick hedge taller than me. I peered over the gate. The house looked like a mansion. It had a front porch with rocking chairs and a swing painted the same color green as the shutters on the windows. In the yard, there were flowers everywhere, popping up between bushes, curling around the lampposts, blooming in pots in the front steps. And I could hardly believe my eyes. There in the bushes along the porch was a dog, a little black and white dog digging so hard the dirt was flying out behind him. His rear end was stuck up in the air and his craggy tail was waggling away from his front legs. 
worked faster and faster at the dirt. Then a voice came through the screen door. Willie! A big fat woman came out onto the porch. I ducked behind the hedge and pulled Toby down beside me. I put my finger on my lips and said, Shh! I waited to hear her holler mean things at the dog for digging up the yard. But then I... Then I bet she was going to come storming off the porch and smack them. But she didn't holler. She laughed and she said, What am I going to do with you, you naughty little thing? I, I crawled on my hands and knees and peeked through the gate. The woman was sitting on the porch steps, holding the little dog in her lap and letting him lick all over her face. When she scratched, up, when she scratched him up and down his back, he stuck his face in the air, closed his eyes and kicked one leg, leaving streaks of mud all over her shorts. She took his head and in both her hands and rubbed her nose back and forth against his nose, like Eskimo kisses. My daddy used to give me a long time ago when he loved me. Then she picked up the dog and went inside. My insides were getting all swirled around in excitement while I, I went over to the dog's went over the dog's saloon rules in my head. I mentally checked them off one by one. That little dog didn't look like he'd bite a flea. He didn't bark one bit, and it was for sure that the dog was loved. I glanced at the house again. That was one big house, and the lady must be rich. Then, as if I needed one more thing to convince me, something caught my attention. The, mail mo the mailbox next to me to the gate was kind of rusty and leaning over in a tad. It had big black letters and painted on the side and said, The Whitmores. The Whitmores? The lady was named Whitmore, and this was Whitmore Road. Toby, I said, the lady owns the whole street. Can you believe that? His eyes grew big and shook his head. I grinned and gave him a thumbs up. Toby, I said, I think we just found us a dog.